Hey guys, I hope you're doing well, and I hope you're enjoying Clash Quest. I know I sure am. I've been playing this game as much as I can every single day, and I know I'm not as far as some people, but the last time I checked in, I was on this little Goblin Kingdom level, and I have definitely made my way up the ladder here, really enjoying the prizes and the puzzles for each of these levels, and I just wanted to share with you the top five ideas for success in Clash Quest. So tip number one really comes from right within the game. And when I first started, I just didn't notice it. Um, so I just want to draw your attention to each of these different characters. And if you push that I button, you see how it explains here that the archer shoots an arrow to the closest target, even over the walls, to the closest target. So that's going to give you a great understanding of what the archer is going to do on the game board while you are playing the closest target over the walls. Now, the barbarian isn't picky when it comes to choosing targets he's happy to strike the closest enemy whatever that may be so take note that the barbarian is going to hit the first thing that it comes across and it's just going to basically keep moving to the thing that's closer and closer now again the wizard we want to take a look these are some of our opening characters the wizard casts a fireball at the closest enemy if there happen to be other enemies nearby they get their share of the fiery blast too. So this really tells me right away that I don't want to be using the wizard if there's no other enemies around it because you're really wasting out on that or wasting the opportunity for that area of effect damage. Now, that's getting a little bit into the strategy, but it's important that the more we understand what each of these characters can do, then we can implement those talents of them more efficiently in the game. The prince charges straight ahead, dealing a good deal of damage to the enemy. Foolish enough to be standing on his way if any actually do stand on his way. So this one's really straightforward. He goes straight ahead. So whatever is ahead of the prince is what he's going to bash into. Now the giant, the giant has become one of my most favorite, favorite um, characters here in the game. And as it says here, the giant attacks defense buildings first. That's really important. When those are taken care of, he heads toward whatever is left on the battlefield. As a big guy, he can soak up a lot of damage. He sure can. I like to keep him in the front row of my, my available characters uh, as I'm playing the game. And also, the ability to take down those buildings, it is really awesome. The giant is a big wrecking crew, and do not underestimate his ability. Now, the goblin, you pick it up a little bit into the game. I thought I would just mention him quickly because he's a pretty helpful little dude. He's attracted to gold first and foremost and deals double damage to gold storages. So when there's no gold storages left, he attacks whatever enemy is the closest. I've found that these little goblins, while they are easy to die quickly, if you use them efficiently, they can really do a great thing. So the more you learn about each of the different characters, classes, the spells that you're using, such as this fireball, um, which is basically, it's an area effect spell as well. Just like it says, a three by three area. And this rocket is going to take out a single target enemy. So the more we learn these, then as we're playing the game, it's going to help us make smarter choices. All right. So tip number two is a little bit more to do with gameplay. So let's just get into one pretty easy map here. And let's just talk about a couple of things real quick. So quickly look ahead at the enemy. Now, do you see that number that's hovering beside them? The front row all has number twos. The second row has a two. This mortar has a five on it. And that is so important to understand that that is how many turns until that enemy troop will attack. So what that means to me is that we need to prioritize the lower number enemies so that we can maximize our usage of our energy, which is our troops basically we don't want to use any more than we need to so that we can make it to the last map without wasting them so as you can see i've pressed down the preview now you probably know that but don't forget to do that there's no timer right now i could walk away from the game i could come back to this level and this is going to be exactly where i left it and i think that's really really important so what we need to do is we need to recognize our current threat and right now, those have all turned to a one. So we have to look and see what can we do to do a little dent. Now, I know this map is not super duper difficult, but I definitely like the idea of taking out the mortar more than I do with those two archers. That mortar with its area of attack damage tends to do such a big hit to my troops. Now, there we go. To take out both those mortars in the back, especially that number two mortar in the back, this is going to be a great move for us right now. It gives us a chance 
just use the minimum number of troops necessary to do the maximum amount of damage. And I think, you know, that is something that when I realized that, it made me just think about the game in a totally different different way. And every time you make an attack, your troops are moving up from the bottom. You have to reprioritize. You have to decide what is going to be the next move each and every turn. And a little trick here that I didn't realize, if you scroll down, you can actually have a quick peek right in the level what it is that's coming up. So, you know, want to make sure that you get the very, very most out of it. And that really leads me into my, my third tip is to remember to use your spells. You know, you've got this book down here that allows us to do a little swap. Um, there's nothing intense as far as swap wise, but you know, we could move this wizard, swap him with that goblin, and we could give ourselves a big goblin combo or... Ultimately, the whole point is that you're going to get the most out of it. Now, here, for example, we could move this back row wizard up here. Give ourselves a little five wizard combo, which is going to be a great, great bit of damage to bring to the board. So that's what I got for this one. Let's go and take a look at the next tip. Tip number four is really, really simple. It is to remember to pick up your free rewards in the shop as often as humanly possible possible and i think it's really great how often these offers in the shop change i don't have the exact number but i know it's less than 24 hours and compared to some games it feels like the shop always has something new which is awesome and it's a great way you know for you to get in here and get some free stuff to get some some wizard elixir or to get you know some of this archer elixir get yourself another another character that you can play with so the more free stuff you get the uh the less of these precious gems you're going to need to spend and the less grinding that you're going to have to do to get those upgrades that you need. Now, tip number five for me is you have to remember to try to do as many of these side quests that pop up as possible. The thing that I've noticed is gold is a very difficult resource to acquire in this game so far for me at this level. But when I do my best to get these extra chests and barrels and that little um the little dungeon that you can get the treasure dungeon all of that absolutely adds up to your progress in the game happening at a faster rate and a, a cheaper rate as well so that's what i've got for now i'm looking forward to continuing to play this game look for more live streams on my Aerolith gaming channel and don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on any of my future content good luck in the game and thank you so much for watching